Thank you, everybody. So, welcome to Tosha. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay, just a bit. Um... <clears throat> So, I'd just like to say thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let me just work out with the lights because you can't even see us here. <laughs> you want it right, you want everybody to see your right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put on the lights as well. Lights. Okay. Brilliant, that's better. Yeah. Not too bright now. <laughs> Very. I've been putting on makeup today, so yeah. <laughs> no, I don't wear makeup, that's how I'm <laughs> So you're going to get the wrong me. So, yeah. uh, thank you for coming today um, and supporting the screening of Sisters in Cinema. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to open the floor and just ask you to tell people about yourself and what you've been doing over the, over the years. Okay. Um, so, I started off as an actress and I went to drama school and started being auditioning for films and theatre roles. Um, but what kind of um, progressed my um, writing and directing was I joined an airline and I didn't have time to go to um, audition. So I started focusing on my writing and um, realised that I really loved it. And um, there was a lot of stories that I wanted to tell, um, a lot of stories that I wasn't seeing on film. And I saw a gap and I was like, I want to create some work. Um, so yeah, I, it was really trial and error, and that's the honest truth. Um, I just sat down and started to write a script, and my first one was actually quite funny because the it was like this much action and this much dialogue, and it just went down the script like that, so I just had no idea what I was doing. Um, but then I started to do a couple courses, and um, in about a year, I think it took about a year, and then I was like, yeah, I'm ready to make my first film. Um, and that was Aki and Saltfish. And at first I was just like, okay, I've written a script, I'll let someone else direct it, but then I started to see lots of images, and I was like, actually, I think I want to give directing a try. And yeah, it really just progressed from there. Um, after the first film, you get the confidence to do the next one, and um, more and more along the way. <laughs> and it just uh, progressed from there, really. So where did you do your film education? You said you went to film school. Was it in this country? No, I didn't all? go to film school at all. No, you didn't? Um, no I went to drama school. Okay. Um, that was expensive enough. <laughs> um, then after when I started to look at film school, I was like, okay, um, I think it's going to have to be a thing where I learn along the way. I did a couple of stuff at Ray Dance and read quite a few film theory books, but it really was learning um, on the jobs. Um, started to do a couple of running jobs for friends. Um, on their films, and yeah, it's, I'm still learning, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brilliant. So, um, you just spoke about how you got into film acting, into acting and filmmaking. So, what has been the challenges you faced over the years of doing the work that you do? Oh, there's been loads. <laughs> <laughs> um, all have been overcome, but um, I think initially it's just having um, the confidence to do it. Um, it was just this very male-dominated world um, with no stories like mine that I wanted to tell from my community. I like to explore my culture and have things that I've grown up around <coughs> projected on screen. So, um, yeah, it's having the comments to kind of be like, well, I've got a voice too and I've got stories to tell, so I'm just going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to really wait for anyone else to give me the permission or the funding. Um, and that's another challenge as well um, that is very... There's so many ways, as you were saying before, there's so many ways of new technology of just getting out there and doing stuff um, of good quality as well. Um, so yeah, once you overcome that, it is just like just getting out there and doing it. I say to so many filmmakers, you know, yes, funding's important, but there's so many, you know, fundraising opportunities and even ways to do things for free that it's possible. Um, so there's that. Um, also, you meet a lot of people along the way that say they can do stuff and they can't. Um, you know, they're like, yes, yes, really like enthusiastic and passionate. And then when it comes down to it, because it's low budget, they don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's um, not too bad when it's a runner, but when it's your editor that you're uh, depending on, um, it can get a bit difficult. But, um, you know, as I said, these things can overcome. And they're all lessons, you know, you learn to kind of 
see people's work first and, you know, not just go around what they say. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think those are the major challenges um, that I faced. Um, just saying, your films that you've done are just so amazing because we showed Leah. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. The Aki and Saltfish film is hilarious. You need to go on YouTube and find her film about Aki and Saltfish. And it's about a young woman that doesn't know how to cook a particular yeah. meal. And Aki and Saltfish. Yeah, Aki and Saltfish. Anything. Any food. Anything. And, her, and her boyfriend Conference. comes around and always getting takeaways all the time. It's like, I want something home cooked. And then she tries to cook Aki and Saltfish. She literally tries to kill him. <laughs> literally. <laughs> she's trying to make this fruit, this uh, Aki and saltfish, and she's like, oh, I don't know yet to pour the saltfish. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> like, you made this meal. And it's just amazing the way you've done it because it's all about culture and it's a hot topic at the moment because everybody wants to go into the takeaway. Not much people want to learn to cook because it's long sometimes. It's easy just to go to shop and pick up a patty and a dumpling and go and eat it as opposed to making something to, from scratch. So that is quite interesting that that will open up that dialogue with people about the importance of having skills of cooking because sometimes you might get hungry and that Caribbean food shop is not open so what are you <laughs> going to do? You might have to resort to... Yeah, and I like that. It's actually on the, on the culture. Yeah. I think that was more mm. resonant as well because yeah. it, here it is, a, Car a Caribbean uh, person from a Caribbean heritage and completely which is what we're finding a lot of, um, especially within the African Caribbean community, where a lot of people are coming from the countries and their heritage is almost a forgotten story. So I, I thought that was a brilliant way to put it in context with humor. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And even like Leo as well, where you talked about sickle cell and how the young lady coped with the sickle cell and the relationship with her mum that was very powerful as well and it features our um, one of our matrons um, sister there um, Angela Winter Angela Winter yeah so when I saw that film I was like yes that's good and then you did something about hair sisters with lots and that's even that as well links to what's been talking about in the news recently about um, in America they're saying that if you've got lots you can't work no more yeah. It's, a, it's, yeah. it's legal to um, to exclude people from work if you've got locks in your hair. So that's quite interesting. Even you have locks. Has, has that been a hindrance in terms of your acting roles or did you get stereotype cast into certain roles? Not at all. Yeah. No. Is it in there? Yeah. No, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, no, not at all actually. Um, I think it's become a lot more popular now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I get more roles now with my locks than I did um, when I had my short Halle Berry start. <laughs> funny enough, so yeah. not at all. Oh wow, that's good. I'm very and free. the Sisters with Locks film was really good because even I can see members of the community within that film that I know. I was like, I know, yeah, I know, yeah, I know that. I mean, that was it. Yeah, okay, that's good. <laughs> at least the audience can relate to um, what's on the film because mm -hmm. when we've done do our film screenings at Black Issue Sundays, people always say, come off the comment, oh, the stories are always from America. Yeah. Or always mm -hmm. from America, so what's the story over here? And then I always say to us, okay, if the story is always from America, um, let's start writing about stories over here. And write about, um, start writing scripts, even if you don't know how to write scripts, you could probably go watch a YouTube video, even speak to yourself, but well, how do you put the script together? Go on main dance courses, I've been on the Saturday course, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get the camera on the patrol, yeah. make a film, <laughs> like, okay, slow down, shall we? But even that, I've still got the aspirations to make the film, but then we have to work together as well, because maybe I don't need to learn that skill, because you've got that skill. Exactly. So we work as a collective, exactly. as opposed to me trying to take on, I'm going to be this next um, Eva DuVernier, and I'm going to take on the film world, and then I don't need to do that as an individual, we can do it as a collective. And that is the history of filmmaking in this country, because people formed groups and was making films as a collective. We need to think about, maybe is that a way of, <coughs> we do that in the future now, in order for us to make more films, because they are, can be very, very expensive in terms of funding. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I think it's about collaboration, mm -hmm. um, and there's not enough of that going on, yeah. I don't think. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think more writers, even some actors have met, yeah. you know, they've got stories to tell, mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily, um, you know, writers, so, you know, they'll express ideas to me, and then, you know, I'll go away and work on it and whatnot, so yeah. it's all about collaboration, <coughs> it's so important. So, what advice would you give someone who wanted to get into filmmaking? Um, just to do it, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, find out, you know, what your strength is. 
um, whether you're someone that wants to be behind the camera, um, whether you want to write, whether you want to edit, yeah. find out what that is and, you know, start to own into that, you know, find out um, what courses are available, because there are free courses. I mean, I so wish um, I was um, starting out now because there's so much for 18 to 25 year olds. Yes. Like, there's so much about, um, and if you're over that, which I am, um, just, yeah. <laughs> Um, then yeah, I think it is about just having confidence to go out and do that and, yeah. you know, hopefully finding a mentor mm -hmm. as well that you can link with. There's a lot yeah. of people out there now that are opening their arms a lot more than when I first yeah. started, so. Yeah. Okay. I've got a question for you. I mean, because I've seen that most of your films have two strong themes. One, you tend to come from a very cultural aspect, and two, you tend to focus on the female. So what I would love to know from you is what has inspired you to take this route to endeavor on bringing those stories to light, the cultural story, the feminine black story. I'd be really intrigued to know. Um, that's a good question, actually. Um, <laughs> um, well, it comes from my home. I mean, my mom's Jamaican, my dad's Jamaican. Um, I grew up in a really strong female household. Um, I listened a lot, <laughs> usually what I should have been. <laughs> I was very, very observant as a child, um, and a lot of the stories that I, held, um, that I heard, they inspired me to write. Um, so my mum, when she watches my film, she's like, oh my gosh, she's like, I have to stop talking around you, or I shouldn't have said that, because, you know, but I do get inspired by a lot of the older generation and their stories from the past and their whole movement <laughs> over to the, you know, England and... Um, I love to see these stories in cinema. So yeah, it's taking my upbringing, and not just my mum, my grandma stories, but also my dad's. Um, he was one of like 11 children, so there's loads of stories there that are slowly coming in. <laughs> um, but also my community as well um, inspires me. And for example, with Leah, sickle cell was something that just kept on coming up. Um, and I had a cousin that passed away from it. Um, but when I was much younger, so I didn't understand anything about it. Um, but then I kept on meeting more people in the community that had it. I was like, well, this is something that needs to be researched. And then from that, I was like, oh, I want to put that in one of my films, somehow or another, as a film. So. Really, really good job. Really good job. Thank you. <laughs> really good job. And even when you talk about family members and elders, we had um, Uncle Charlie Phillips a few weeks ago. And even when you're speaking to him, you could make a comedy, you could make document a whole film and just listening, talking to this man and the way he talks and the sayings and even the experiences that he had. Um, we can make so much films from just the one person as well. And even a lot of our elders that are in the community we need to start getting the film, the camera in front of them because they're not going to be here for much longer and they've got so much stories to share but we're not recording them on film. And it'd be a good way to even give back to the community. Um, for example, when my children are looking back at what we did, and like, oh, that's what we were doing at that time, because we need to start recording and keep preserving that history and that legacy and our story on film as a way of preserving that for future generations. So finding an alternative way, so finding ways of funding that, finding ways of preserving it, keeping it within our community as well, that is another challenge that we have to face brought a very good point as well because I've noted that you've been doing a lot of crowdfunding this recent uh, the Brixton that we need to tell the audience about yeah, yeah, the yeah. for that yeah. um, but apart from that it would be interesting for the audience to find out that myself how it is that you've gone about to fund and to finance these ideas and these inspirations yeah um, so, I'm um, not sure which one to start on, because you mentioned Charlie Phillips, and what I wanted to say is he kindly donated a lot of um, props for my recent movie, Brixton Rock, which is based in the 80s, and he's got loads and loads of things, so I just wanted to get that in, because I was very, I was very grateful for that. Um, but initially when I started, it was self-funded, um, and just getting everything, like, either I was filming in someone's house that I knew so I didn't have to pay for it, um, using actors that I knew that I'd just have to pay, like, expenses and, like, a daily rate. And then when, it was only when I made Leah um, that I needed more funding. 
and it was we started um, we did crowdfunding um, but didn't raise as much as I would have liked to uh, but we had two funders that literally supported our whole film so and were there rich people that you had to find? No, they weren't, actually. No, they weren't. Um, I mean, the thing is, I mean, like, a lot of people, Leah's 20 minutes, yeah. and, you know, I've seen films that are 20 minutes long that have cost eight grand to make, mm. and I just think with a short film, let's keep it simple, <laughs> let's yeah. save the big money for, you know, the big films, the yeah. features. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I mean, Leah was, cost about 1,500 pounds to make. Um, so it wasn't, you know, loads of, you know, really rich. The quality is high. Very good. Very high. Well, that's, 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 that's the aim. <laughs> <laughs> yes, wow. That's really good. Yeah. Charming. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, I'm working you know, at work, how, much, how, much, support know, working at how much putty you have to sell <laughs> 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 to make that money. But it can be done, and it can, it can. be done. Because if you put your mind to something, mm. and you've got the vision, and people support that's the right. vision, the money will come. Exactly. The money will come, people will support you. And I've, I know there is a definite wave now that we want to see our story on film. Mm. I want to support the story on film that is depicting us in a positive light. Yeah, because right. we don't want to just see one side of image being put on TV or in media. So, right. for example, the like the drugs and the, and, and, and the, and the gang gangsters life. and the gang yeah. life. That's not There's my so experience. But we got to look at what is the alternative? What about the young person that gets up thinking, you know, let me find two planting and, and have egg for breakfast? <laughs> Those type of stories. Just, I know, going to school, managing life, um, going shopping with your mum and having that discussion. Um, it's having an eclectic yeah, range, yeah. you know, of topics and subjects that we want to see on film and not just one, yeah. you know, so yeah. that's what's important and yeah. that's unfortunately what we're still getting there. <laughs> No, well, we will get there, yeah. <laughs> and we will get there because the discussion and debates I'm hearing in the community now, a lot of people are moving towards that, mm. and we are seeing an explosion of independent films at the moment. We've I've been supporting so much independent films yeah. that have been coming out um, in terms of distribution. They spoke about that in in the film as well, looking for people to distribute the films and get having somebody that goes out there and show the films. So I always try and find the films, go and research when I'm meant to be sleeping at night time in my night class. <laughs> <laughs> computer, finding films, tracking down directors, because it has to be done. And these are the stories we want to share. That's why when we have our community program, we make it varied, because what I want to do is show a very a wide range of different topics and different films, because yeah. they're out there, but there's no one over here bringing it to our audience, so I'll try and do and that. distribution as well is kind of difficult over this side of the yeah. border as well, yeah. um, because I'm sure they can speak more in, in depth on it. Yeah. But we find that... Um, in terms of distribution for independent um, filmmakers, especially from the black diaspora, mm -hmm. to find people or um, distributing bodies that will actually fund or say, yeah, we'll take it on, it's very difficult. So many times people either have to go outside. I know, for example, Nosa, yes, yeah. he, he gets his audience from Brazil. Yeah. You know, that's where, that's where the, the, the call of his, his audience, I mean, yeah, he does get something over here, but it's Brazil he's had to go to. Um, I don't know, but, how is it been for you? How is it going? Well, I, haven't, um, I haven't entered those waters yet. <laughs> but um, since you mentioned no so it's actually really um, important to yeah. talk about because he found a gap in the market. He yes. had this idea of this African superhero yes. <laughs> movie. Yeah, it was the first one. Um, but it was so different yes. that it was like, okay, it might not appeal to, you know, everyone, but yeah. there's definitely people that are interested yeah. and follow Arisha's. Yeah all over the world and one of the biggest, you know, supporters of that is Brazil, so yeah. brilliant, you know. Yeah. Eventually England will, you know, yeah. catch on, yeah, but he's just <laughs> gone out there and courageously yeah. done something. And, and that's what you have to do, come out of your comfort zone. You do. Come out of your comfort zone and take calculated risks as well. Because sometimes when I f find films, I'm thinking, oh, what would the audience respond to films and the films that I'm not too sure about? That's when you get the most response. Yeah. It's just being like for when we showed Queen Nanny, not most, not much. only a few people may know about her contributions yeah. to the um, African liberation movement, but we've had sold out screenings and people phoning me up, can I get a 
like squeezing them on this wall at the back. And I'm like, wow, the feet, the response to that film was just like, wow. And I was tracking that film for a year before I actually got the film. And I was like, yes, I have to show the film. And that's part that's of this. Yes, and that's distribution as well, tracking down the film, trying to get it to an audience as well. And, and it's good to actually show strong black characters, strong black female characters on film. So that's it's what been a long time support. coming, yeah, the Queen Annie. Yeah. A long time coming. Yeah. So <laughs> as soon as that was out, yeah. like I first read about it online, yeah. I was like, okay, it's in Canada. Yeah. They're screening it in America. Like, but when's it coming here? Oh, and yeah. I told everyone about yeah. it. So as soon as you yeah. said, yeah. okay, we're screening it, yeah. there was a lot of colors. I was tracking them down, and they said, yes, you can have. Them. I said, yes. <laughs> get out there. And that's why it's good that we bring the film to the audience and use spaces like Hackney Attic and mm. um, the Ritzy yeah. Cinema. Um, Picture House has been very good to yes. issue studies and, and um, decolonising the arts as well and supporting and providing spaces for us to show these films. Yeah. Um, we must keep using the spaces and keep continue that relationship yeah. as well because it's good to come to a space which is like a cinema and watch these films. Maybe we're going to work on getting it into the cinema. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. more of a process that's to get in the there. Best step. Yeah. Yeah. And we want to see, encourage more people to come and use the cinema as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so what films have been the most inspiring or influential to you and why? Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> There's loads. Okay. Um, Crooklyn. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I just love that film. Um, there's many reasons, I think. The soundtrack, the period it's set in, how well Spike Lee executed it, yeah. just the characters, the family, everything. Um, Babylon, yes. the definite. Yes. That's, yeah, I can watch that like a hundred times, and each time I just love it. A little late at night. <laughs> Requiem for a Dream was another film that really influenced me. Um, know all of these are by heart, but they're, they're definitely the three that always come out, and there's more, there's just too many, um, you know, uh, City of God, I think, really influenced me, um, there's too many, sh I sh oh yeah, God. but I think no, I'll we'll put like you on this one, <laughs> An Imitation yeah. of Life, that's one yes. of my favourites, yes. but I think the story and all is yeah. Yeah. very inspiring. Because I know the Barbican is actually having a um, scheme where you you still nominate a film that's had an impact on you. And I was thinking, oh, that'd be interesting to yeah. even find out what film, for example, coming from the black community, has an impact on you. But I know for me, the film that had an impact on me is, um, is Good by Uncle Tom. Mm. Oh, when I watched that film, oh. that's like, I thought, I thought I knew about the African Holocaust or mm. as otherwise known as slavery. But when you watch that film, it's just like, has anybody seen that film? Yeah, few people it. have seen it. It's not, it's not roots. <laughs> it's not roots. I always recommend people to do certain reading first and watch it on a Friday, so you've got the whole weekend to recover. <laughs> so watch it on a Sunday night and go to work. <laughs> it's not one of those films that you can go to sleep after. It's a very powerful film, and then I even use it when I'm teaching my African Holocaust course because it emphasizes certain points. And when you do the course, you pull it into context, and that's a film that had an impact on me in terms of seeing the real horrors of enslavement. That that small piece of our history that's had a huge impact on us today. So even that, um, looking at films and how that impacts them, because films do have a very emotional, yeah, you get very emotional films, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we showed the film The Hard Stop recently about Mark Duggan and the family's fight. And when I watched that film, I think I was traumatized for the whole evening. I was mm. like, that film, I must, I killed about two tissue boxes. I was boiling their fight and I was just like, wow. Yeah. That is a, that that, that yeah. touched me because I was involved in the campaign on the outline on the on the sidelines. I was going to meetings and seeing certain. So when they were showing certain scenes in the film, I was there at the wow. meetings, and then you actually get to see the hear from the family, and the children, and how that impacts on them. I mean, that's a story. That's a part of the the story we never get to hear about how how <coughs> death by police impacts on the family yeah. and the ongoing campaign. So. Um, big up to the director for doing that film because it's needed yeah. and it starts that dialogue about how do we even heal from that and how do we support the family because yeah. that is the story that we need to share. Very good. So, um, Did you ask him the question about distribution because I think 
Yeah, he's, he's had it's, it's yeah, a bit tough as well. He's had it tough, and I know that Metro John has gone into administration now, so I don't know what mm. is going on in terms of film distribution, in terms of now that the film, that the distributor's gone into administration. <coughs> How would that impact on the film? Yeah, but to, just to touch on that, I think that that's another realm that needs to be um, revisited. Yes. Because everyone's thinking, you know, we hear certain terms like production, with, mm. ah, we hear distribution, ah, we, you know, everybody gets scared. I think in the same way that everyone has been able to tear apart the, the myth and the illusion that, oh, only certain people can do film, yeah. and be able to go in and do that, I think it's the same way we're gonna have to, to approach distribution. Yeah. Because I think, you know, look at Haley Jerimo, you know, you're gonna be showing his film yeah. in a few weeks. Yeah. Uh, in a month's time, he'll be showing his, his famous film, Sankofa, and he pretty much distributes from a cafe. Yeah. That's how he rocks it. Yeah. So, and people are buying these things, you know, it, it costs yeah. how much money to just get his film? You know, you have to pay a good £350 just to, so, you know what I'm saying? So, but the thing is, it's, it's, and it's working for him. Yes. It's working for him. So we possibly, um, as a creative, as a collective, we need to really reassess this whole idea of distribution and possibly tear apart and unravel and maybe think, maybe we need to do it from our yard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know? Do you know? Yeah. Get someone to do the admin, you know, whatever, and say, okay, let's, like, you know, you've got spaces like Hackney Attic and wherever else, and you say, hey, can I, can I put the film there? You know, but we do need to revisit it. That's what Lucky She Studies have been doing. We introduced the Hidden Colors series in this country and we've been distributing that film for years. And we distribute Hidden Colors. Oh, so much films. <laughs> so much films we've distributed and launched in this country, yeah. premiered, and we're just working from our house. Yeah. Little storage container, put all the DVDs in there. But we've been doing our own distribution and because no one else would do it, I said, you know what, we need to get these films out there. Mesomet Tim Black Wall Street, we launched that in this country and we're distributing that documentary because we need to see these films and it's an education. So I'm encouraging people to buy the DVDs and then show them within your, in your house, invite the family around, cook some food, and everybody sit down together and bring like, have family nights yeah. in, bring the family back. So not everybody sits around the dining table and eats. So could you have like a family film, film night to put on a DVD, everybody watch a DVD and have a debate and discussion about what you just saw in the film. And that's what we try to do in our house as well. Anytime anybody comes to our house, DVD goes on. Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it, it gets, I have that conversation and debate and it gets deep and debate about go and me and my dad will be reasoning about anything. And he's talking about, oh, shall we watch the film again? And I'm like, oh, dead. <laughs> I'm not gonna go there, but yeah, you just go have that long debate and talk about certain things as well, and it's and it's good to do. It's good to do. So, um, so do you think there's um, no? Tell us about your recent film project, Brixton Rock. Oh, yes, Brixton <laughs> Rock. So, um, Brixton Rock is an adaptation of the novel Brixton Rock by Alex Wheatle, and I read the book. I think it was about nine or ten years ago now, and completely fell in love with it. I don't know if has anyone heard of it. Brixton Rock, Alex Weedle, fantastic. Yes, my Bible for like 10 years. Um, so when I uh, read the book, I was still an actress, so I just immediately thought, I want to play the, the sister in it. Um, and I really fell in love with the period and, um, you know, the, the story of a young man trying to find his identity in, you know, 80s Brixton, um, the Thatcher era. Um, there was just so much going on politically wise, um, race wise, um, unemployment wise, it was just a whole amalgamation of issues that he's um, confronting and then through all of this he um, meets his mother who's Jamaican and there's a whole story behind that how he came about um, but yeah it's about a man finding, a young man finding himself and his identity. Um, I met the author shortly after reading the book and um, literally had like lots of sessions with him just sitting down talking about like how he came up with the idea, his life story, how that influenced the, the book um, and then fast forward about six years I'm then asking him can I write the screenplay and he said yes so um, it started yeah literally from that and it's quite crazy now to think we're a little step ahead closer to making the feature um, but it wasn't that simple. <laughs> um, 
Again, I was still quite early on in my filmmaking career, so I wrote the screenplay um, and then rewrote it and rewrote it again, and then made a whole bunch of films um, in between. <laughs> Um, and then I kept on thinking about Bricks and Rub, I was like, it's still the film I want to make, but I think it might be a little bit ahead of my time. It's a period piece, but yeah, about last year I was like, that's it, I think we just need to do it. And um, crewed up with some other female filmmakers, um, we managed to get a little bit of funding to make it. And we got Calvin Dunbar to play the lead role, Angela Winter to play the mom, Will Johnson. Um, and yeah, it's literally a 10 minute pilot, which we're going to use to make the feature, yeah, to make the big feature, so. Is it how yeah. No, that's finished now. We've made the film. Okay. Yeah, so we've Oh yes, made you it. definitely made the film when you, uh, you had my little sister here, Shanika. Yeah, she, she was, was absolutely amazing. Oh my gosh, she came back, she was so excited. Oh my gosh, she's just, oh you're just so brilliant. Oh my gosh, thank you, so much. thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm like, just, I'm giving you these opportunities because <laughs> if I know, I want to encourage you to do things that I would have loved to do at your age. So I'm going to give you those opportunities. Oh, she loved it. She was, I never see her get up so early in the morning. She's like, all right, I'm going, bye. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> she was just on it. I was like, okay, wow. But she loved it. She loves you. Oh my gosh. Oh, you just like, it was lovely like, having her. Goodness. <laughs> yeah. Really amazing. Yeah. And it's good because you can see behind the scenes of yeah. filmmaking. Because she's always helping me with filming and all of this. And I said, you know what, you've got the opportunity to do things now. Because you're young, there's the technology there. Let's embrace the technology and encourage you to do things. And that could be something that you do. Yeah, so it's good that she took that on board and she said all her friends about it as well. So any little things that comes up, she's like, you better tell me, show me. So everything I'm finding, I'm telling the sharing as well. And there's lots of opportunities, like you said, there's lots of opportunities for young people now that they should get on board with and, exactly. and they're trying to make it available and promote it to our young people because they don't seem to see those things no. so i'm trying to encourage them to go and have the confidence to go for it because they see it they think, oh, maybe it's not for me yeah. giving them that confidence, confidence to actually apply for those things mm -hmm. as well because maybe it existed in my time maybe it just well, flew past me and was on my radar but even having the confidence like somebody said oh sure maybe let's make a film i'm like oh okay with nowhere to start but I know there's people that I can say, you know what, I need to make a film, can you help me? You have that person, people there to network to help as well, but some people may not have that opportunity. That's true. Yeah. And our young people are very creative, don't listen to what the media say. They're very creative, very talented, very brilliant, but we need to give them those opportunities to show their brilliance. Yeah. yeah, we have to do that. So, um, any closing words or any last... Um, Information you want to share about the Brixton work is when it's going to be released. Uh, any, any additional support you need as well? You know, like you said, he's into colonising arts, we'll support you in anything, so you know, <laughs> you don't have to go there. But yeah, even that, and how can we support you with any um, future film projects? Yeah, if you can follow us on our Facebook page, uh, Brixton Rock Short Film, um, you can see lots of information on our progress. Um, it's currently in post production. Um, so yeah, it will be ready very soon, but yeah, please come to our screenings once it's finished and follow us on the journey to the feature because it will be made. Um, may take another two years, but it will be made. Yeah, it'll be made. So yeah, watch this face. <laughs> so, um, Christian, any other questions? No? So we're going to open the floor. If anybody got any questions you want to ask any of us to speak here? <laughs> Anybody got any questions? Yeah? I want to ask about, um, so obviously there's no British Film Council anymore, mm -hmm. but in terms of those institutions that are left, like the BFI, yeah. Brain Dance, how much support mm -hmm. have you been offered by those organisations or, or sought or mm -hmm. your Um. Well, I've applied to some of their funding opportunities and it's kind of hard to say because with all of my films, I've always applied to some of their opportunities, like they have um, like London's Calling and yeah. things like that, but I mean, there's so many people applying that you kind of get looked over, especially the stories that I'm coming from, so I kind of know, yes, you know, nothing tried, nothing gained, but it's not stopping there, it's going on and doing it. Um, but in direct you know, answer to your question, um, not much so far, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I mean, yes, they're there, um, but it hasn't quite leaked into our projects yet. 
you know. Um, I mean, we do, so I don't know if you guys heard of Soul Screenings, that's at the BFI. Mm -hmm. um, and I know some of the members will come to some of those, those screenings, and I've screened my films there. But, um, yeah, it's kind of like, you do have to just get up and do your thing. Yeah. And Soul Screenings specifically, BAME? Um, it is, yes. Yeah, yeah that term there. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, it's a great screening, showcasing of um, up-and-coming talent. Um, and it's at the BFI, which is... Really great, but yeah, they. It's not yet. <laughs> Maybe in the future I'll get a little bit of support from them. But you know, it's always been this thing. I mean, there's so many filmmakers trying to make their films. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just not quite to us yet. A diversity drive going on as well. And I know, I know, Film London has supported, especially back in studies, in terms of um, film, not so much film distribution, and uh, film exhibition. So we've applied and had funding to do film exhibition um, with them. But there are programs and different funding streams as well. But it's just making that link to the community and encouraging us to apply as well. Mm. So that we so they do see alternative stories of the same type of films all the time. Yeah. So it'll make yeah, eighteen to twenty five. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure that there's yeah. something yeah. there for you. Yeah. It's worth trying. Yeah. 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 Um, do you feel supported by the um, kind of wider women in filmmaker in filmmaking community? Because I see a lot of groups all the time, uh, but then I go to screenings and the rooms are empty. It's like the the lack of community seems to be very yeah. evident, and I do I do wonder whether there's there's like an overarching group women in filmmaking that supports each other, or is it everyone themselves? For themselves. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a little bit like that. I mean, they do have women in film and television, um, that community, which is very supportive. Um, and you do have to sign up for it and pay. <laughs> um, but I think it's more joining with other female filmmakers. I mean, I'm working with quite a few at the moment and again that's been going to screenings, talking, you know, um, and then, you know, taking the time to meet up outside, discuss projects. So I think it's more a thing that you do outside, but group wise I haven't really tapped into that at all. Mm. Yeah, it's a shame. But I think what you might find as well is that when it comes to these niche groups, it's not as it's a little bit more hard to access other groups to come in, meaning one, you have to get over the hurdle of letting people know that it actually exists, two, people are still not used to the idea that, oh, you do art, you do film, oh, and you're feminine, oh, and you're black, you know, so it's quite a few hurdles to get over, you know, and um, so you might find in each, in each of those niche because um, I, I, I agree with you, sometimes you have these things and you don't see the representation, you're like, what's going on? But these are the hurdles that are happening that um, people might not understand. There's a whole behind scene thing of, of just trying to access these groups. You know, one would have to say further that I guess in the future, as filmmakers, once they become more prominent, we see more female um, filmmakers in the, in the stride, that they actually go out and let the communities know, uh, you know, it will have to come to that. In the same way museums are now going out and saying, hey, we're museums. And yes, everyone can come, not just some people, everyone. It's the same thing, I promise you. So, yeah. Yeah, um, it's a bit of a series of things. Um, is there help from Channel 4? And um, do you, is there any way of um, distributing or getting involved in festivals? And um, uh, I was just wondering about Bird's Eye, because I know that that's more than like a docu documentary thing, but I think that's supposed to be quite supportive and helpful. And also whether or not there's links across the, um, the pond with yeah. Black Sisters over there. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's quite a few to answer in one. Um, I'll start with the, with Channel 4, no, I haven't had any support through them. Um, I have reached out, every time you make a film, you know, you'll share it 
um, and try and get through to you know someone you will recognise it at least. But no support from Channel Four um, and things they don't produce anything of their own either. It's all from outside. So um, yeah, that's that one I'm done with. When it comes to across the pond, I immediately. I mean. Yes, I'll tap into the community here, but there's so much going on across the pond, and they really do like embrace our stories and our films. They want to hear this yeah. black British voice that yeah. you know they don't see mainstream. So, yeah, you know, my films have screened in lots of festivals um, and private screenings as well, which really means a lot to me because it's like, okay, yeah. people like we want to show this to our community because we feel that it's something that they would like to see and it will, and it will connect to them. Because yeah, when we showed Leah, it was packed. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we had about over 80 people that day. And it was really good to see people coming out and supporting a British short film. Mm. Most people come out and watch a feature film, but short film people came out in their numbers and the, and the debate and discussion afterwards went on. We have to like, we've got to go now. <laughs> it's like, you nobody know, didn't want to leave. And that is a good thing to see. And yeah, even yes. recording that, I was taking pictures, and that's a good see, thing to see because we want people to come out and support the films. We have to encourage that all the time. Mm. There was one, there was something else you asked this one in the middle. Birdseye? Birdseye. Yeah. Yes. yeah, you just apply and see. <laughs> as I think, I mean, they do put these, um, you know, opportunities out. But everyone's applying for them, you know, and it is a kind of thing of yes, you you know, just try, but know that you know there's someone in hundred chance of you actually getting through. Um, and if anything, it should just fuel your determination more to make it, because that's just another opportunity. You might get it, you might not. But how much do you really want to make the film? Yeah. So yeah. How are you finding it? Uh, reaching out to for instance non Jamaican communities like other communities with uh, black African or other uh, communities from uh, Africa Caribbean or even other foreign uh, nationalities. I'm here by chance because my friend suggested I come and enjoy this. Are you able to reach out? Are you able to Share your, your films, your experiences, how to have done Yes, through um, festivals, um, because there's, you know, an audience will be mixed, you know, it's not just going to be Jamaicans. Um, so through festivals, definitely your film is seen by the wider community. Um, also sharing online, through Twitter, mm -hmm. other people start to connect into what you're doing. Um, but yeah, I'd like to think that my stories are kind of universal, uh, maybe because they're more um, from a female point of view. Um, and I just think, you know, when we watch a movie, we don't know what the director looks like. <laughs> Even if the, the majority of the cast is white or black or Chinese, we don't know what they look like. So I'd like to think that they connect with everyone, um, regardless. Uh, one of my favourite films, um, The Zorro. Um, oh, I love that film. Oh, love that film. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Has anybody seen The Zorro? Oh, yeah. It's about the uh, martial arts and the capoeira and the, and the orishas and the history. Yeah. All, all of that. I love that film. And that's not made by, by somebody from our community, but I love that film. Like, if I could show that film, I'd show it every day. <laughs> she brings us up every, every time. Every time I love the film. Time. And even that, you don't know who made that film. But the film is done really well. So it doesn't have to be um, a non European person, but they got, they got it yeah. right, which is really good. Um, but we want to encourage everybody to come out and watch these films, engage with the films, even the African community as well, because they may not see sickle cell as something to do with them, but they, or, or natural hair, not yeah. something to do with them, but they come out and support the film. Yeah, it's good. Is there anybody else? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, the, uh, the main film we watched was about uh, Af uh, American black. Yeah. Like, uh, female directors. What about Britain? Mm -hmm. Is there an equivalent film I could go and watch? Um, not yet. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Because not yet. Yes. 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 Yes.
and this song, there's so much. Even from last year, I said, you know what, this I've got a long list yeah. of films that I want to do. I need to start putting the list into actions and I'll start writing things. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's needed because when we, when especially me, when I'm looking doing my research on Black British history and what we contribute to this country, and on film, there's not much. America, there's loads. Caribbean, a bit more, but our story over here, not much. So we, that could be, we could even do Sisters in Cinema in this country and look at the people that are contributed to film in, in cinema yeah. in this country, even if behind the scenes, on um, distribution, all of that, we need to be recording those and that could be in the next project. So if you're not on our mailing list, sign up to our mailing list because you might get the crowdfunding uh, email <laughs> soon. <laughs> but I guess I'll sleep and put down the ideas and we come together and we reason we can do all of that, we can do yeah. this. We can do it. Yes, we can. Yes, <laughs> we can. Yes. So, um, any other questions? No. So, I'd just like to say thank you. Thank Jennifer, you very coming. much. Jane. Thank and you. And blessing us with your beautiful presence as always. Thank you. And thank you everybody for coming out and supporting the screen and I hope you enjoyed the evening. Um, so, if you're not on our mailing list, please join our mailing list. We've got lots of events coming up uh, for so-called Black History Month. But as you know, Black History Studies is our Black History Month for last all year. So we're going to be back here on the 8th of October for the UK premiere of the Maze and Nina Simone film. So we're going to be back here um, 8th, of, 8th of October and then we're going to be back here on the 15th of October where we're going to be showing a film about Queen Nanny um, of the Maroons. Very good documentary. So thank you everybody for coming and enjoy the <laughs>